So I wrote the book because the IPCC, which gathers uh, the best scientific information we have on climate change, it actually brings together scientific research from over 10,000 climate scientists around the world, several hundred of whom are here at Columbia University. The latest IPCC report is very clear about what we need to do to avoid catastrophic climate change. Catastrophic climate change being defined as a warming of more than one and a half to two degrees Celsius. And what the report tells us is that we need to do two things. We need to invest significantly more than we are today, and we need to do it faster. In fact, what the report says very clearly is we need to increase investment three to six times, and we need to do that ideally by 2025, no later than 2030. So the book really speaks to that challenge. It speaks to what are the opportunities for investors to invest, what are the so-called climate solutions for investment, and how do investors participate in this new era, the era of climate change. The three things needed to change investment attitudes and bring about innovation in a timely way are first, regulation from governments globally to set a price on carbon. Today, approximately 20% of all greenhouse gas emissions have a price on carbon, either through carbon taxes or emissions trading systems. And that's a terrific start. We're already about one-fifth of the way there. But ideally, we need a price on carbon everywhere globally, because once carbon is priced, investors will then finance innovation solutions that will accelerate this transition of reducing emissions. That's key. The second thing we need are standardization of measurement. So today, thousands of companies are reporting their greenhouse gas emissions, and over 5,000 have actually already agreed to net zero pledges. The challenge there is that how companies report is not standardized. It's a little bit like going back to the 1920s in financial reporting. Before we had standardized financial reports, it was virtually impossible for an investor to compare companies uh, on an apples to apples comparison. That's where we are with climate change today in measuring greenhouse gas emissions. You can't really compare where are companies against each other as an investor, which one is outperforming. How do you actually make those investment decisions? Standardization of greenhouse gas emission data and reporting will make a big difference along the way. And the third thing we need is simply to raise awareness among the investment community about the opportunity and the challenges of investing in climate innovation and solutions. I think there's general awareness now of the challenge of climate change. I think people are aware of the physical risks that we're facing. They're aware of some of the transition risks, potential policy and new technologies and how this can affect investments. But I think there's a still a great gulf in, 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 in misunderstanding, and that tends to take one of two forms. Some investors, uh, we would put in the denial category, they are still denying the magnitude of climate change. And that's not helpful to creating change. And there's another group of investors I would put in the defeatist category. It's too late, there's not much we can do about it, so we should just sort of invest for the present. And neither one of those is going to help us address catastrophic climate change. In fact, uh, neither one of those positions is correct either. We do have an opportunity, we do have the ability to reduce emissions to zero. In fact, those technologies exist today. More than 50% of the need to reduce emissions is commercial, so there are investable opportunities. So the third, the third thing we really need to know is to increase awareness among investors. And in fact, that's one of the, the major reasons I wrote the book on investing in the era of climate change, is to increase that awareness in the investment community. If we look back in the last three decades, there's no question that's what impacts business more than anything else, and ultimately investors in those businesses, has been technology. Technology has changed everything in business, and in any business sector, we can see how technology has influenced companies. 30 years ago, if you looked at the 10 most valuable companies in the world, only one was a tech company. Today, of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world, seven are tech companies. So technology has changed everything in the business world, and I think that's well understood today. If we look forward three decades, what is going to change business and investors in those businesses? And I believe that's going to be climate change. And the reason for that is very simple. For the past 300 years, we've built our entire global economy around the use of fossil fuels and other activities that emit greenhouse gases. And it's been tremendously effective. Today, the vast majority of the human population lives with a reasonable amount of prosperity and health and enough food and transportation to live reasonably well. It's been successful. The challenge is, 
it's unsustainable. These emissions of greenhouse gases, we now know, are going to eventually lead us to catastrophic climate change. We've got about 30 to 50 years to change that. So what's going to affect business and investment in the next 30 years? It's going to be climate change. We are living in the era of climate change now, and that's going to change everything for the investment community.